Wow, wow, wow. Yippee, yo, yippee, yay. Get out your dog walkers. What's your 1% for today? What are you going to do to be 1% better? What are you going to do to make someone else's day 1% better? Let's get into it. The U.S. Senate, the U.S. Senate introduced an act, a Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act. Dun, da, 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 last week. Yes, I'm actually mildly, mildly excited about this. Uh, I, the House has put through so many bills and um, I've not become excited about them until the Senate does something. So the Senate has put together a nice bill here, an act. So uh, we're going to go over it so that you understand it because people are definitely going to ask you about it. They're going to ask you about it in the dispensary. I'm telling you, bud tenders, they will ask you about it. Okay. So let's break it down so that you know what the heck is going on. Right. I censored myself there. Yeah. Okay. All right. We are going to use Kyle Yeager, um, Kyle Yeager from, um, the marijuana moment. Um, he wrote an excellent article as a reference. So Senate bill to federally legalize marijuana and promote social equity finally filed by Schumer Booker and Wyden. Thank you, senators. Okay. A much anticipated U S bill to federally legalize marijuana and promote social equity, um, has finally been introduced dun, da, 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 just over a year after unveiling a draft version of the cannabis reform legislation. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, uh, Senate Finance Committee Chairman Ron Wyden, and Senator Cory Booker formally filed the Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act, or the CAOA, on Thursday. The news of this eminent release started circulating last week. Um, advocates and stakeholders have been eager, eagerly awaiting this moment as leadership has worked together um, to gather imp input on various provisions and build widespread buy-in. Now, the final bill incorporates significant feedback received through more than 1,800 comments that were submitted following the draft's release. But with ongoing talks about reaching a passable compromise, this Congress, it's uh, this for this Congress, um, it's also possible that certain provisions attached to the new lengthy legislation, which is 296 pages, could serve as building blocks for something else, a more incremental reform package that Schumer has been discussing with bipartisan offices in both chambers. Now, in any case, the main thrust of the now filed 296 pages of legalization bill closely resembles that of the earlier version, which weighed in at a merely 163 pages, though the senators highlighted a number of changes which expand uh, generally expand on the draft. For example, there are revisions concerning cannabis industry worker rights, a federal responsibility to set an impaired driving standard, banking access, uh, expungements and penalties for just possessing or distributing large quantities of marijuana without a federal permit. Um, the bill would also create a new federal definition for hemp that would increase the permissible THC by dry weight to 0.7% from the current 0.3%, but will also make it all, uh, it will also uh, but we'll make it so all THC isomers would be included in that to total, not just Delta nine, not just Delta nine. So they're going to conclude Delta eight and all that. Now, far too long, far, for far too long, the federal prohibition on cannabis and the war on drugs has been a war on people and particular people of color, says Chuck Schumer. Uh, Schumer said in a press release, adding that the CAOA will, quote, be a catalyst for change by removing cannabis from the federal list of controlled substances. Yes. Protecting public health and safety. Yes. And expunging the criminal criminal records of those with low level cannabis offenses, providing millions, millions with a new lease on life. Oh my gosh, dude. When I, when I said that, I just get excited. I get really excited if that happens. I, I, it's just a, a home run. It's a, it's what I've been trying to get done. It's what I've been advocating for. Right. Okay. Now Schumer had said earlier this year that the CAOA will be filed in April, but that didn't happen. Then he amended the timeline and made a promise to bring the bill forward ahead um, of the August recess, how the, far the measure will advance is yet to be seen, but the stage is now um, set for committee action as lawmakers work to potentially bring it to the floor. To that end, a Senate Judiciary 
Judiciary Committee, chaired by Booker, um, has scheduled a hearing for Tuesday that's titled Decriminalizing Cannabis at the Federal Level, Necessary Steps to Address Past Harms. Um, its details about the meeting are limited. However, um, the CAOA has been filed and the bill is sure to be a focal point of the discussion. Uh, as many more states uh, legalize cannabis and work towards reversing the many injustices that failed war, war on drugs levied against black, brown, and low-income people, the federal government continues to lag woefully behind, said Booker, um, with strong restorative justice provisions for communities impacted by the drug war, support for small cannabis businesses, and expungement of federal cannabis ex uh, offenses. This bill reflects long overdue common sense drug policy. Yes, it does. I agree with you, Senator Booker. Um, with the sponsors, uh, while the sponsors have spent several months discussing the proposals with offices around the uh, across the aisle, uh, there's still a fair amount of skepticism about the prospects of it reaching the 60 vote threshold needed to pass the measure through Senate. Yes, I agree. Uh, Republican senators are generally expected to oppose a measure uh, to remove cannabis from the Controlled Substance Act, let alone one that would also impose a federal tax on marijuana sales and contains progressive social equality uh, provision, provisions such as uh, automatic expungements for prior cannabis convictions. Um, it's also not guaranteed that all Democratic members of Senate will support the legislation. Uh, several members have either been noncommittal or signaled that they'd oppose it based on the original draft language. Now, Democrats hold a slim majority in the chamber, so any dissent within the caucus would compromise the bill's chances of passing, okay? Now, this week, judiciary, the, uh, this week's Judiciary Committee that we spoke about hearing could offer some important insights into how the bill is, is going to be revised as uh, being received on both sides, being received on both sides. Now, Wyden said that he's asked the sen his Senate colleagues to, quote, uh, think long and hard about what keeping the federal government stuck in yesteryear means for public health and safety, unclose quote, right? Yeah, think about what that means. Um, by failing to act, the federal government is empowering the illicit cannabis market. It's ruining lives and propping up deeply rooted racism in our criminal justice system. It's holding back small cannabis businesses from growing and creating jobs in their communities, he said. Uh, cannabis re legalization is here and Congress needs to get in with the program. Yes, they do. Now, the bill lays a framework that touches on a diverse array of cannabis issues. Some of them have been addressed as standalone bills, others that are unique to CAOA. Uh, and that could be useful in lawmakers ultimately deciding to take a different approach to the reform. Now, while Schumer pledged to bring a full legalization bill to the floor prior to becoming a majority leader, uh, both timing and political dynamics have raised questions about the measure's path forward, especially as talks continue about alternative slim down packages. Now, regardless, a year of coalition building in concert with bipartisan offices, advocacy groups, and stakeholders have has produced a final bill that Schumer feels is worth at least debating ahead of the ahead of the November midterm election. Now, there's already clear support for comprehensive legalization on the House side as the chamber voted in April to pass a similar measure called the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act, or the MORE Act, and it stands to reason that the CAOA could would also enjoy uh, majority support there if it managed to clear the Senate. Okay. All right. So we're going to take a break for our sponsor and then we're going to come back and we're going to break down the details of what the CAOA uh, is, what, what it's talking about. What are they trying to introduce here? Okay. All right, and we are back. And now let's break down the details of the key provisions of the CAOA. Okay, let's let's break it down. Okay, one, um, it's going to require the attorney general to finalize a rule removing marijuana from the CSA within uh, Control Substance Act is what they're saying. So require the attorney general to finalize a rule removing marijuana from the um, the, the Controlled Substance Act within 180 days of enactment. Yes, please, please. 
uh, that's the number one thing we've been trying to do, right? It, it does have medicinal value, not not have medicinal value. Okay, impose a 5% federal excise tax on small to mid-sized cannabis producers, which would gradually increase to 12.5% after five years. For large businesses, the tax would start about at 10% and increase to a maximum of 25%. Okay. Uh, another thing, I'll also only those 21 and older, only those 21 and older would be allowed to purchase recreational marijuana products as it already the policy in states have legalized for adult use. So it's just going to mimic that. Um, you got to be 21 and older to, uh, to, to engage in medical or excuse me, recreational marijuana, recreational marijuana, much like alcohol, right? Right. Okay. Now, also, this is another good one. It's going to expunge the records of people with low level federal cannabis convictions within one year of enactment while allowing those currently incarcerated over marijuana to petition the courts for relief. What does that mean? It means that uh, if you have a conviction, they're going to talk about getting rid of it, right? You're going to, it's a low level. We're going to, we're going to expunge that. And then also uh, if you're currently incarcerated that you can at that point petition the court for relief. Yes, yes, yes. We want to do that. Uh, create a federal regulatory framework for the marijuana industry with the Food and Drug Administration, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, and the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, all playing key roles. Yes, we need to do this. Um, within FDA, within the FDA, there would be a center for cannabis products responsible uh, for regulating the products, labeling, distribution, sales, and other manufacturing and retailing elements of the cannabis industry. What they're saying there is that we would have um, uh, uh, labels, like we, you would be forced to have labels. You know how I always tell you guys, oh, check your label, make sure you check your label, check your label. Yeah, well, the reason I tell you that is because you don't have to do that. Um, it's not forced to do that federally. Um, so it would be very nice if we all had the same type of label, and we all knew what we're looking at much like our food, right? Much like our food. Um, the financial crimes enforcement network would need to update or issue new guidance, clarifying to banks and credit unions that policy change means they can lawfully service legitimate cannabis businesses. Yes. This is so important because I've talked to you guys about how I felt like I was in a trap house when I first started bud tending because we would literally be counting out tens of thousands of dollars on a table in the middle of a room every night. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, it was just, it was crazy. It was crazy. So this will stop that. This will stop that. It's going to protect bud tenders. This one's very important for your protection, bud tenders. Uh, states could choose to continue prohibiting marijuana production and sales, but they could not prevent transportation of cannabis products between legal states through their jurisdictions. Okay, so what's that mean? It means, uh, remember when I tell you you travel with marijuana and if you go uh, from one legal state to another that you can get in trouble? Yeah, this would mean you, that doesn't happen. So that means I could travel from, uh, let's say, uh, uh, Florida to Ohio and travel through all those states with my medicine and not get in trouble, right? Yes, that's how it should be. Um, federal laws would still prohibit trafficking in states that ban marijuana and in legal states that impose laws for trafficking. Well, of course. Uh, establish a grant program to fund nonprofit organizations that provide job training, reentry services, and legal aid. The program would be managed by a new cannabis justice office under the Justice Department. Okay. Um, the Department of Justice grants would also go towards law enforcement hiring and community outreach to combat the illicit market. Uh, why not? Yes, these are great things. A separate, separate equitable licensing grant and equitable licensing grant programs would provide funding for states and localities to promote participation in the industry by minority and low income people. What they're saying here is it makes it easier for people that don't have 30 to $100,000 to open up a business, right? You can do this. We, we, it would be less expensive. Uh, to get your foot in the door. Uh, further, further, there would be a 10 year pilot program through the Federal Small Business Administration for intermediary lending to provide direct loans to eligible intermediaries uh, that in turn make small business loans to startup businesses um, owned by individuals adversely impacted by the war on drugs and socially and economically advantage, disadvantaged small businesses. Uh, what they're saying is uh, if you have a, a, a conviction, for marijuana, 
Uh, it can prohibit you from getting uh, a, a loan. It can prohibit you from getting a loan, um, which would prohibit you from starting your own cannabis business, for example. So we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that. <laughs> They're going to make that not be possible, right? So you're going to be able to do this. You can have a, a conviction and also get help and get, get start your own business, right? You're not going to be uh, put a big wall in front of you. All right. Now, people could be could not be de- people could not be denied federal benefits due to the use or pro- possession of marijuana or conviction for a cannabis offense that includes preventing the revocation of security clearances for federal employees yes yes uh those of you that don't aren't bud tenders right those of us that partake that are not bud tenders you know uh sometimes you're allowed to tell who you work for and sometimes you are not So this would help that. This would help that not being a problem, right? Federal employment drug testing for marijuana would also be prohibited with certain exceptions for certain uh, sensitive positions, such as law enforcement and those involving national security. Yes, yes. So absolutely, yes. Uh, Physicians with the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs would be authorized to issue recommendations for medical cannabis to veterans. That in itself needs approved. Okay. If they don't approve anything else, that in itself needs approved. Our veterans are getting screwed right now. They get in trouble if they have cannabis and the cannabis is super, super helpful to them, especially anybody with PTSD, right? Okay. There would be measures taken to prevent diversion, including the establishment of a track and trace regime. Further, uh, retail cannabis sales would be limited to 10 ounces in a single retail transaction. Uh, Here's an idea. Let us grow our own. Let us grow our own, right? Then you don't have to worry about it. Um, Federal law would be amended to explicitly state that the SBA program, small business programs, and services available to marijuana businesses and companies that will work with them, right? Uh, it was just stating that you can get the, 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 because you're in a marijuana business, a lot of times you can't get help with these uh, small business programs or federal programs that would say, because, because it's federally illegal for marijuana. So you can't have those, right? So now they're saying, if it's not federally illegal marijuana, you can have access to these small business programs and grants and funds, right? Um, the, the government accountability office would be required to facilitate a number of studies into marijuana policy, for example, evaluations of the societal impact of legalization in states with recreational marijuana laws on the books, including information on impaired driving, violent crime and more. Absolutely. Let's keep let's get it down. Let's figure it out. Um, the labor of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the Bureau of Label Labor Statistics, I'll get it out, would need to compile demographic data on business owners and employees in the cannabis industry. Yeah, let's make sure we're all being fair. Uh, employers with federal cannabis permits uh, required under the legislation that violates certain federal labor laws could see their permits rescinded. A bold policy proposal that would make the marijuana industry uniquely uh, labor friendly. Yes, yes, everyone needs to do that. Let's make it fair for everyone. Um, The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services would be required to work with the National Institute of Health on ways to promote research into cannabis impacts. There would be a specific requirement to study the diversity of marijuana products available for research product uh, purposes. Yes, more research. I call for it every day. More research, please. This bill calls for an increase in the quantity of cannabis that's available to study for purposes, right? For, for study purposes. Yes. This is another thing I've been talking about. It's federally illegal. So we can't study it. We can't get the quantities that we need or the type of marijuana that we want to study. They give us crap. We can't study crap. All right. Um, there would be targeted public education campaigns meant to deter youth consumption. Uh, states would also receive funding for initiatives to prevent youth use and impaired driving, which would include money for education and enforcement. Absolutely. Same way we do with alcohol, people. Same way we do with alcohol. We can do it here with marijuana, too. Uh, The Department of Transportation would be responsible for developing a standard for THC impaired driving within three years of the bill's enactment that states would, would, would be required to adopt unless the secretary finds the department is unable to set such a scientific standard. Uh, Yes, what they're saying there is uh, we need some way to test to see if somebody's impaired. 
um, cause you could be impaired too much to drive. Um, so how do we measure that? I don't know, but I do think it's something that needs measured. I do think it's something that needs measured. Um, a car is a, a very heavy 3000 pound missile, right? So you have to be careful with it, right? Now the national traffic uh, Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration would be tasked uh, with collecting data on impaired driving, producing educational materials on this issue for the states to distribute and carry out educational campaigns. Yes, and I totally would do that. I would go to high schools and uh, I would totally talk to you about how you should not uh, be impaired overly impaired on THC and drive. It's no different than alcohol people. Um, vaping delivery system products that contain added natural or artificial flavors would be banned. Okay, so vaping delivery systems that contain added natural or artificial flavors would be banned. Okay, they would be banned. Now, last year, Schumer emphasized the CAOA will specifically seek to restrict the ability of large alcohol and tobacco companies to, from taking over the industry. I agree. Uh, legalization advocates generally praise the unveiling of such a detailed and far-reaching cannabis bill by Senate leaders. Uh, quote the introduction, official introduction of this bill to finally end the policy nightmare of federal marijuana prohibition is the culmination of unprecedented leadership in the Senate and engagement with st uh, stakeholders across the political spectrum, said uh, normal political director Morgan Fox. Um, we look forward to working with lawmakers to move this legislation towards passage and eagerly anticipate engaging in substantive concert, co uh, substantive conversations on all aspects of federal marijuana law with Senate members. Now, these conversations and hearings are long overdue, he said. The vast majority of Americans support comprehensive cannabis policy reform, and now is the time to figure out how to do that in a way that effectively addresses the damage done to marginalized communities and creates equitable opportunities to the bungeoning, uh, bungeoning uh, cannabis industry, right? Right. So we need help. Uh, like we know people in California, cannabis industries in California are having trouble. They are struggling. Now, Justin Striegel of the Better Organizing of Win Legalization said the bill's introduction marks a tectonic advancement in the movement to the end of marijuana criminalization with a credible pathway to ending the 80 year failed experiment on prohibition. Yes, as the bill moves through the legislative process, we will continue to rally um, the public to engage the democratic process to support reformers and defeat those who stand in the way of progress. Now, the U.S. Cannabis Council CEO S Stephen Hawkins said the bill's introduction by the majority leader is, is itself the strongest sign yet that cannabis prohibition in America is still and is, is coming to an end. Um, we applaud the authors of the CAOA Act for their leadership and vision, he said. We are reviewing the updated legislative text and look forward to having substantive uh, substantial discussions on how to best transition away from the illicit market to the fully regulated national market with opportunities for everybody. Now, the change to the CAOA since the initial draft do show signs of compromise, both for the sake of conservative, conservative legislative interests, but also for, ec for equity advocates who have spent months pushing for a final product that puts those, those impacted by the pro pro prohibition first, right? So on that latter point, there's language in the banking section on the measures that would encourage financial institutions to provide financial services to small or minority owned businesses. Um, the bill would also create additional funding to community developed financial institutions, as well as uh, make additional investments to minority de uh, depository institutions to provide these organizations with the capital or money necessary to reach small and underserved business businesses and consumers. Now, the revised leg legislation also stipulates um, that while basic FDA standards must be met, the agency could stop a cannabis business from marketing marijuana food items. As the FDA works to develop regulations for medical cannabis products, the revised text provides for a transition period to let businesses continue to sell in compliance with state regulations. Now, expungements is another central equity uh, goal of the bill that advocates provided uh, 
provided feedback on and the new text accordingly uh, includes some changes such as removing a blanket ban on relief for those with convictions that involve aggravating factors. To that end, it builds in discretion into the expungement process and there would be no, no sentencing re uh, review requirement prior to peti petition for relief of being able to move forward, unlike in the draft version, okay? Additionally, in response to the stakeholder feedback, there were changes made to the opportunity trust fund mechanisms that might have been uh, delayed the distribution of the social equity funds. And in order to accelerate the available funds, uh, the introduced bill specifies uh, funding levels for each program as a direct appropriation from the Treasury General Fund and requires the Secretary of Treasury to reimburse the General Fund from revenues in the CAOA Opportunity Trust Fund. Okay. Now, the long, the, the year long push, the year long push by the Senate leadership to get the comprehensive leg legislation bill to the floor has not just been a source of frustration for stakeholders who wanted to see the reform move more expediently. It's also created tension with advocates and pro-reform lawmakers who've argued in favor of passing bipartisan uh, incremental policy changes like the Secure and Fair Enforcement Act or the Safe Banking Act, as we've talked about here, to simply protect financial institutions that work with state legal cannabis business. Uh, if you don't know about the Safe Banking Act, I have a, a, a podcast check it out. Um, that bill has passed the, the House in some form uh, seven times at this point, seven times, most recently as part of a must pass defense bill. But Schumer and colleagues both um, have faced criticism, criticism over their in, insistence that broad reform must be enacted first, both as a matter of social justice and because they feared that passing the banking bill could first compromise the GOP support for the CAOA could be. Now, additionally, there are reported plans in the works to advance an alternative omnibus cannabis reform package if the CAOA does not garner enough support to be enacted. Um, offices in both chambers are said to be discussing a plan to advance what would effectively be an omnibus of uh, incremental marijuana reforms, addressing issues like cannabis, banking protections, small business administration, uh, assistance, access to uh, marijuana research, for example, but stopping short of descheduling cannabis. No formal deal has been reached at this point, okay, where they're stopping short of descheduling cannabis. Meanwhile, a GOP a Congresswoman, Representative Nancy Mace, a Republican South Carolina, filed her own legalization bill last year. The state's Reform Act that share similar provisions to the Democratic-led proposal, it has not received committee consideration, but the House flips following the midterms, but if the House flips following the midterms, some feel it could be a vehicle for reform should Republicans assume control of the chamber. Now, those are serious questions about the prospects of passing any broad legalization bill in the current congressional climate. Um, there are serious questions whether we're going to get it done, especially given the steep Senate vote threshold. But another looming question is what President Joe Biden would do if legalization measures uh, does ultimately arrive on his desk. What is he going to do if he gets it there? Is he going to sign it? Is he going to sign it? He better. He better, right? Now, <laughs> despite supermajority support for the reform within his party, the president has maintained a firm opposition to adult use legalization. Instead, he's voiced support for a modest change, such as decriminalization, rescheduling, and continuing to allow states to set their own policies. Now, after more than a year in office, however, he's yet to take any meaningful steps to make good on those campaign pledges. And days before the House passed the Moore Act in April, then press secretary Secretary Jen Psaki um, reaffirmed that Biden's position on legal cannabis has not changed. OK, that said, the White House drug czar recently said that Biden administration is monitoring states that have legalized marijuana to inform federal policy, right, to inform federal policy, recognizing the, the failures of current prohibitionist approach. Now, the president has also made his first substantive comments on cannabis policy this month, reaffirming to reporters that he does not believe that people should be in prison over marijuana and stating that his administration is working on cannabis clemency issues. And there we have it in a nutshell, people, that is what's going on. Uh, hold your breath, do not 
hold your breath. Do not hold your breath, people. Do not hold your breath. Uh, there's a lot to go. But I can tell you, um, since we've had so many House bills go through and the Senate sat, this is the first time we've seen the Senate one actually be introduced um, to even, even talked about or written <laughs> or even serious, uh, even accidentally serious, right? So this is good news. This is very good news. And will we get everything on here? No. We're not going to get everything, but some is better than none. That's what I say. Some is better than none. So come on, uh, Congress, hammer this, hammer this shit out, hammer this shit out and let's get people what they need, right? Let's get people what they need. All right. There you have it. Save the date and educate. Tomorrow, we're going to do a day in the life of a bud tender. What's a typical day like for me in the dispensary back in the day? I'm going to talk about what a typical day is like, and it'll be good because um, I can point out some of the things that this bill might help with, right? That it might help with. All right. Boring disclaimers. These are my experiences and my experiences only. I'm not claiming it will work for you or anyone else. With that said, that is why, in my opinion, it needs to be federally legal so we can study the benefits of cannabis. Remember, these are my opinions and my opinions only. I do not expect you to substitute my judgment for your own or professional advice. If you're having a crisis, call 911. All right, people, stay legal and stay out of trouble.